Greetings, my name is Monty Martin. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin. And, and we, we are, are the Dungeon, Dungeon Dudes. Dudes. And with the 2024 Player's Handbook, Dungeon Master's Guide, and Monster Manual just a few months away, we thought we would ask the question, what is the best edition of Dungeons & Dragons? We released a poll to our wider audience and gathered as much feedback as we could. So we're going to be sharing our thoughts, but we're specifically going to be looking at a lot of the results from these polls to see what our community thought about the best edition of D&D. There's a lot to discuss today, so let's get rolling. While there's much debate over the merits of the different editions of D&D, there's no question in our minds that 5th edition is still going strong. And that's why we are launching our latest Kickstarter project, Monsters of Drakenheim, which is now live on Kickstarter. Monsters of Drakenheim is going to be a 5th edition compatible book filled with over 150 new monsters, probably a lot more than 150. We'll see how many we can fit in the book. But not only is this going to be an incredible monster book filled with horrible creatures from Monty and My Nightmares, uh, based on eldritch horror, classic science fiction fantasy, and uh, dark fantasy as well, but we're also adding a lot of other elements into this book. Each of the monster entries is going to come complete with artwork and lore that ties it into the narrative and world of Drakenheim, helps you as DMs inspire creative ideas for campaign structures or adventures, and it even includes maps to use as battle maps or to build layers for these monsters to inhabit. Monsters of Drakenheim naturally builds on the world and adventure that we've created in our first two books, Dungeons of Drakenheim and Sebastian Crow's Guide to Drakenheim. But whether or not you are running your own Drakenheim campaign or creating your own homebrew adventures, you'll find lots of new monsters, mechanics, magic items, and more to use in your games at your game tables. With tons of accessories and full digital support, so however you choose to play the game, you're going to be able to make, make use of some of the awesome creatures, monsters, and other content that we've created for this book. The links are all down in the description below, so get in on the campaign while it's still live. But now, on to the discussion of the best edition of D&D. A little bit of a disclaimer before we jump into the meat of this episode. We released a survey that we sent out to our audience, and Monty and I are amateur survey makers, so we did our best. <laughs> we are a channel that mostly covers 5th edition content, so it's possible that the results of the survey, despite our efforts to engage the wider TTRPG audience, could have biased results. When we launched the survey, a very popular content said, you're going to get a lot of people who have only ever played 5th edition. And from the data that we got back, it seems like people who have only played 5th edition and nothing else self-selected and largely chose not to fill out the survey at all. So the results that we ended up with were surprisingly diverse in their opinions and preferences. And so that we hope that the data set that we do have shows an interesting and reasonable slice of the D&D-focused TTRPG community. So with all that being said, let's get into crunching some of the numbers. Who's playing what edition of D&D? For starters, we had 739 respondents to our survey, and for every edition except fourth, the majority of people both were a player and a DM in the editions that they played. Fourth edition was the weird outlier here, where there was a lot more people who were players and a lot less people who DM'd, mm -hmm. and not a lot of people who were players decided that they also wanted to DM. It feels like fourth edition, if you were a DM, that was like your job. And it, it's it's very strange. And I, I will say I know that there's a, a a certain tenor of respect for fourth edition, but I think that a lot of people underestimate how painful 4E was to DM. And that, that might be why it yeah. took a certain caliber of uh, person. Yeah, it was a it had a lot of DM friendly mechanics to it, but it was, it's weird in that respect. Um, there were only 20 people who responded saying that they had never played fifth edition. So 97% of survey respondents had played DM or both for fifth edition. Meanwhile, 40% 
of our respondents have played or DM'd 4th edition, but 70% have played or DM'd 3rd edition. Surprisingly, 51% had played 2nd edition, and 34% had played or DM'd 1st edition D&D. What is interesting about these results to me is obviously we're looking at 5th edition as probably the one nowadays that most people are playing. But out of the other editions, third and second are the two that stand out as still being the most played. Yeah, or, or the, at least a lot of people have played in the past. Of all the people who responded to the survey, 103 people, or 14% roughly, said that fifth edition was the only edition of D&D that they've ever played. But of those people, only 37 of them, or 5%, said that 5th edition was the only TTRPG that they'd ever played. That's a pretty small percentage. So only 5% of our overall grouping of people, D&D 5e is the only TTRPG that they've ever experienced. They've never experienced anything else. That actually means that majority, a large majority of the people who are contributing to this survey actually have experience with multiple RPGs yep. and multiple editions of D&D. Yes. So so that that means that 85% of people that responded to the survey have played more than one one edition of D&D. Um and 76% have played a game other than D&D. So you there's this very small overlap of a very small group of people, 5%, where it's only 5th edition that, that is their only TTRPG. I think that this is really important to note as we go into the other numbers presented because like a lot of you out there, Monty and I were worried that the results would be skewed in favor of a majority of people saying, I only play 5th edition and it's my favorite, mm -hmm. which wouldn't really give us good result, results. So it's actually really nice to see that it's actually a very small percentage of people who are contributing to the survey who that's that's their viewpoint of course fifth edition is going to be your favorite if the only thing you've ever played is fifth edition but most people in this survey have played multiple editions of D D, and therefore we get an actual opinion from people yeah. who have played a lot and i want to emphasize again that 76 percent of survey respondents had played a game other than D D as well so there's a pretty interesting set of perspectives that are here of people who've tried things other than D D. there's a very common meme that is D D players haven't tried other games and so and it's often used as a way to i find that it's often used as an excuse to brush off the opinions of people who like D D. But what I think we see from our data is that there's a lot of people who have played multiple TTRPGs and they still like D&D. &D. And I think for myself, I'm not surprised by that because I've played a bunch of different RPGs and I love D&D. &D. D and D is still my favorite. I have yeah. lots of other ones that I would play in a heartbeat that I yeah. absolutely love. But I do think that that's yeah. Important. But there, there is this narrative that like as soon as you try an RPG that's not D and D. You don't like D&D &D anymore. And to, that's just not true. So to elaborate on those numbers a little bit further, 7% of the people who had played games other than D&D, &D, their only other game was Pathfinder, which is, again, a very small percentage. Of course, a lot of people who have been playing D&D &D for a long time, the first port of call is to move over to Pathfinder. But that's only 7%. Yeah. A lot of other people are trying a lot of the other cool RPGs out there. 16% had not played any TTRPGs other than D&D. &D. Or Pathfinder adjacent OSR stuff. It's important to re recognize that in this question, 76% said that they played something other than D&D, &D, but there was a 7% because there was a separate answer to the question of if you played something other than D&D, &D, but the only other game that you played was Pathfinder. Right. Right? Um, so uh, that that is an interesting number. We We end up with this kind of like... 24% of people who the only games they've played is D&D and Pathfinder. So as we can see, this is actually a pretty diverse group of gamers who have played a lot of different editions of D&D and a lot of TTRPGs. So let's get into some of the crunchier numbers here with talking about 
who picked which edition as their favorite edition. So for favorite editions, it's not really surprising that still we get 59.4% of our respondents saying that 5th edition is their favorite. 208 said that 3rd edition was their favorite, and 8% said 2nd edition. Then we have 4th edition sitting near the bottom here with only 7% of our respondents, and 1st edition sadly only gets 4.6%. Mm. Not a lot of people are yeah. loving 1st edition. I find that these are very interesting numbers, because first of all, with 4.6% saying 1st edition being their favorite, makes me wonder, okay, the OSR... Or like retro clone type games, like first edition retro clones, games like Morkborg even, are really popular. But yet first edition is only 4.6 the favorite. So well, what's going on there? I mean, when we when we look at how people talked about other games, they're not as popular as yeah, other... It's, it's, like, yeah. I think there's a lot of other TTRPGs that are closer in, not, not gameplay, but just like style. Yeah to 5th edition that are more widely loved right now. And it's also interesting, too, in... I've seen a lot of discourse recently about people talking about Daggerheart and the MCDM RPG leaning... Hev and even Pathfinder 2nd Edition leaning heavily on some of the design principles from 4th edition. And even I think that 4th edition had really good design principles, but only 7% of people said it was their favorite. And I... If, if I'm going to, like, pontificate for a moment... I think that 4th edition had some really good design, but it's not my favorite edition of d and So I think there's a lot of respect for 4th edition, but I think that almost everybody universally acknowledges is that it still was a very flawed edition of the game. 4th edition was an edition that had a lot of babies and a lot of bathwater. Yeah. And you don't throw the don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. There's yeah. there's a lot of stuff to get rid of in 4th edition that wasn't great. But within that, there's a lot of hidden gems that yeah. I think that we can actually borrow and still use yeah. today that actually improve our, our games. I'm not surprised that third edition has such is still the second. I'm not surprised at all that third edition is the the second most loved. I think that third edition is my second favorite yeah. after after fifth for sure. Um, I, and it's certainly up there with the one that I played the most. Like, fifth and third are the ones that I played the most, but I did play a lot of 4 E. I I mean, even I have played third and fifth the most. I, I think you only let me dabble in 4 E for, for yeah. a moment. And I, I personally have not played second or first, except at conventions, uh, in one shots. Yeah. Which is why I think the, 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 the reason why we had this poll is because it's, it's better to look at that. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we didn't feel, as people who have extensive experience with myself, I, I say my experience with third, fourth, and fifth is very extensive, but my experience with first and second is not extensive enough for us to like tier rank the additions. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, but I think that this is an interesting cross section. Getting onto that point though, we did look at the people who have played every edition. If we look at 11.5% of the survey respondents, 85 people. And of those people, 34% said 5th edition was the system that they played the most. But we also got 34% as well who said that they played 3rd edition the most. 21% of those people said that they played 2nd the most, and 8.2% they said 1st edition the most. Only two people who have played every edition of D&D said that they had played 4th edition the most getting into that demographic specifically of people who have played every edition of the game what did they pick as their favorite though so of those people who have played all the editions of D&D &D, only 8.2% or 7 of those people said first edition was their favorite 16.4% picked second edition as their favorite we do get 29.4% though who said that third edition was their favorite 9.4% said that 4th edition was their favorite. And finally, 36.4% said that 5th edition was their favorite. So still, with people who have played all the editions, 5th edition is coming out on top, but we are seeing a bit of a rivalry between 5th edition and 3rd yeah. edition. Yeah, we, we, we are. So if we look at the people who have who said in our survey that 5th edition was the game they played the most... 
what was their favorite edition? So 452 people, about 60% of our respondents, said that they played 5th edition the most. Out of them, 348, or 77%, said that 5th edition was their favorite. This makes a lot of sense to me. If you're playing 5th edition the most, it's there's a chance that you kind of... The one you like the most. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but there's still some interesting results beyond that. Of the people who are mostly playing 5th edition, there was still 11.5% or 52 people that said 3rd edition was their favorite. 6.6% said that 4th was their favorite and 3% like 2nd edition. And only 8 people or 1.7% said 1st edition was their favorite. You mentioned earlier that you're seeing this bit of a divide between the 3rd edition and the 5th edition preferences. Yeah. So I pulled the data and I narrowed the data set down to people who had played both third edition and both fifth edition. So some of these people had played other editions in there, but I wanted to just see, okay, what is the overlap between the people who have played both third, third and fifth? What did they like the most? So 523 people, 70.8% of our survey respondents said that they had played or DM'd both third edition and fifth edition that's that's a good percentage of people yeah that's yeah. so a large majority of the people have played both editions of those people 155 or 29.6 percent played third edition the most 54.3 percent played fifth edition the most 83 people or 15.8% had played something else, some other edition more. And this almost exactly maps onto the preferences because 29% of people of the people who played both third and fifth said that third edition was their favorite. Meanwhile, 51.4% did pick fifth edition as their favorite, having played both of these editions. And 19.5% picked something else some other edition as their their favorite and it's worth noting that of respondents overall 40 percent of our respondents said that something other than dnd 5e was their favorite edition of the game so it's a pretty big chunk it's the lion's share yeah um and and th then it's about 20 percent is the uh, the other half and then it gets very scattered from there so what's really interesting here is we've looked at a large group of people. A lot of them have played all of the editions of D&D. A lot of them have or multiple or multiple editions yeah. of D&D, specifically the rivalry that seems to exist between his third edition, the best, or his fifth edition, the best. And what still comes out is that even amongst people who have played multiple editions of D&D, despite all the grief that I see online for fifth edition, it is still a very strong and well-loved edition. Yeah, well, I think that that's natural. Anything that is popular is always going to have detractors, right? And so I don't think 5th edition is the perfect RPG. No. I don't think that it is the greatest RPG ever made. But it's a really good game, and people love it. Uh, and people that have played multiple different games love it. Well, well, I think we'll uh, we'll talk more about our final sort of estimations based on all of this information uh, at the end. But I think one of the other really important things that we should talk about is that it should be established to everybody that even though we're talking about what is the best edition of D&D, &D, a lot of people in the community are trying new TTRPGs. And in this survey, we did ask, what other TTRPGs are you playing? What are the ones that you really like? And... And that sort of gave us different sort of numbers on who's talking about what RPGs. Yeah. We asked in our survey for people to tell us what other games that they were playing. And so this was something where they got to type in their, their answers. So we're still kind of parsing all this data, but we tried to find what games were mentioned at least 20 times in these answers, as well as looking for specific games that are in our wheelhouse or awareness to find out how often they're being mentioned. And some of these were really surprising. I just want to let it start off by a couple games that we really like, <laughs> that we've enjoyed, that were not mentioned that much in a survey of 700 plus people. So I was very surprised. Um, the Avatar role-playing game, yeah. one of the biggest TTRPG Kickstarters of all time, mentioned seven times. Not to mention 
Uh, Dungeon World was pitifully mentioned only four times. Powered by the Apocalypse and Morkborg and Numenera were both mentioned six or seven times. Yeah, and one of Monty and my favorite TTRPGs that we've ever played, the Alien RPG, was only mentioned nine times. Out of 700, again, 740 people. Fate, another popular system, mentioned 12 times. Rifts and Traveler and Monster of the Week were mentioned 16 times a piece. Monster of the Week specifically is one that we've clearly advertised on the channel, and you can watch me de uh, being the game master on several episodes of that. But yeah, only 16 times. More people yeah. should be playing these games. Yeah. As we move into the 20 plus games that were mentioned, we start with a bunch of Warhammer TTRPG games. There's game. a bunch of different ones too. Yeah. Now, this was actually a really difficult one to parse out because some people would answer Warhammer. Some people would answer like Rogue Trader or or the, the Soulbound or the, the different systems in there. So that's definitely one that needs to get parsed out. But generally, it was mentioned 20 or more times. We saw Warhammer come up a lot. Uh, the GURP system, 23 times. Uh, Blades in the Dark and Cyberpunk, 24 times were mentioned. Savage World was mentioned 26 times. And World of Darkness, 31 times. It's important that World of Darkness was mentioned 31 times. It's part of the broader spectrum of, thing, of things like Vampire the Masquerade, which was mentioned 62 times. Vampire the Masquerade actually comes in third for the top mentioned yeah. ones. Uh, I will also mention that Shadowrun was mentioned 44 times, and Star Wars, which also, again, there's multiple. Yeah, it's, there, there's, there's a lot, but Star Wars RPGs came it, up. It came up 58 or more times. Vampire the Masquerade, again, is at 62, but the top two. TTRPGs mentioned Call of Cthulhu was mentioned 76 times and surprising nobody. Pathfinder was mentioned 148 times in the, in, in the comments. I think I would be very interested to maybe standardize this part of the survey and reissue it and generate a really big list. But I think the, the biggest issue that I had in asking this question was that I wanted to include as many things as I possibly could. But I knew that I wouldn't be able to because there's hundreds of games out there. Yeah. And like there were a bunch Thousands. of games that were mentioned once. And like some people answered this question by responding to it with multiple games that they really enjoyed. Some people just mentioned their favorite non fifth edition uh, or non D&D based system. So this part of the survey was very, very loosey goosey and not very rigorous data collection wise. We're just simply kind of pointing out what was shared in the, in, in the comments of this. Um, but I think that this does indicate for me, I would want to do a, a more robust version of this question, asking people like, what other games have you played? I think it's also very interesting too, because we this is also where you see um, companies like Roll20 often break down the data on these sorts of things, finding out which games are really popular and which ones aren't. Um, and based on the number of times that people are actually playing games on their platforms. And that yields some very, very interesting data as, as well about the popularity of D&D &D and, uh, and, and its, uh, its related systems, but then the non D&D &D based, based systems. Um, but I, I do think though that like, what a cross section. If you had have asked me going into this, what, what people were going to say, I thought that we were going to get the survey where I was going into this expecting to see over half the respondents just say, I only played 5D. And right. what I was going to do is I was just going to delete them. Like I was just going to delete that set of the sample and just look at people who had played at least something other than fifth edition. So I, I, so I was surprised that the data set was so diverse. I saw a few comments on our social media pages of people saying, I don't know if I'm going to contribute to the survey because I've only played fifth edition. Yeah. So there was that self-selection sort of thing happening, which I told those people that they could contribute to it. And we did get a few. But I also think it was valuable that we got the opinions of people who were playing multiple editions. Yeah. I think now that we're finished the numbers crunching and all of the percentages and all of that, let's have a frank discussion about what this information actually tells us. And I think, I think first and foremost, fifth edition is, is well loved and possibly, I mean, it makes sense that it is the most popular. It's the most current. Mm -hmm. But it's still the most popular version. I mean, does the, is that surprising? 
No, no. <laughs> I, I expected that going in, and I'm not going to lie, despite what everybody out there might have wanted to tell me, and the amount of people on social media who are like, fifth edition is terrible. Well, I got news for you. I love it. I love it so much, and it's my favorite TTRPG I've ever played. And I've played a few editions of D&D, and I've played several other TTRPGs, and fifth edition is home to yeah. me. And so I do think, you know, I, I know that there are people that will say try a different game. And and I I do think, I do believe, you should. But I think that there is a little bit of self-denial in certain subsets of the community that says that there are tons of people that have never played a game other than D&D. And as soon as they try something other than D&D, they will never want to play D&D again. And I don't think that that narrative bears truth. I think that there's a lot of people from this data, what I what I see in, in it is that there's a lot of people who have tried a lot of different editions of D&D and who have tried other games other than D&D, and they still like 5th edition. If I got invited to an alien RPG group to play uh, a, a shorter campaign, I would 100% say yes, but you bet your butt that I would come crawling back being like, Monty, run some 5th edition for me. Yeah, yeah. And and like, that's just always where I'm going to gravitate towards. There are so many editions out there. I want to do a campaign of Blades in the Dark. I want to do a campaign of Alien. I want to do a campaign of Morkborg. I want to play more games than I have time to play. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's a really common thing. And I do think that like the, the kind of the cultural phenomenon of this is that um, D&D and 5th edition does exist as, as kind of the lingua franca of the TTRPG world. And I, if, if I could hypothesize something, at least from communities that I've noticed, is that I feel like D&D exists as a really cool way to meet other people that are interested in TTRPGs, to make good friends, and then maybe you experiment with something else. And that seems to me like a pretty interesting way of approaching the hobby as, as, as a whole and a pretty common thing. I think it's very similar to people who try playing board games by playing Settlers, and then they try something else. And yeah. people can come back to games like I, I, I guess all, all of this to say is, is like there's a lot of this idea of like brand loyalty, um, and and to a certain extent, I recognize that like on the business side of things, it's really hard to justify making something that's not fifth edition compatible. Because the biggest slice of the pie from a financial conversation is you're gonna you're gonna you got a bigger audience with fifth fifth edition people and selling something to like selling for that demographic is always gonna give you the biggest demographic, right? Um, whereas it does fragment very, very quickly once you get past fifth edition. It's it's either you're a either you love fifth edition or you love something else, and that something yeah. else branches out even further and further yeah. the lower you go. I think I think if we're looking at this data, something else that all of this information really tells us is if we were putting what's the most popular, what's the second most popular, and kind of ranking them that way, fifth edition's up at the top, but third edition has a lot of nostalgia. People people love third yeah. edition it was definitely the second largest slice of the pie i think for a lot of people myself like third edition was when i really got into D, &D. and yeah. so i think that with for a lot of people third edition is falls into that that golden era of like when you got to play like for me third edition was the game that i played through high school and through my undergrad and i was able to play like my undergraduate campaign, me and my roommates were playing third edition D and D three or four nights a week, and the other three or four nights a week we were playing World of Warcraft. Nerd. <laughs> yeah. I mean, nerd. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Uh, um. <laughs> and 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 so that I have a lot of fondness looking back on on that experience, looking back on the on on my high school campaigns. Um, because like my high school D and D group, uh, even though like we were a bunch of sweaty nerds, like those were some great friendships. And so there's for 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 me in particular, I recognize third edition just has this huge nostalgia factor. I mean, I was way cooler than you in those days. I was staying up all night playing Warhammer Fantasy. So oh, I was playing Warhammer <laughs> as well. Yeah, I I no no my my gamer like like that that my game group it was like. 
we played Warhammer, we played D and D, we played Magic the Gathering. Yeah, we yeah. we we were. I was yeah. That that it was it was it was a fun time. That yeah. honestly, those were like some of the best days of my life. I was playing with all my best friends. We were all nerds, and we yeah. were playing all these games. Yeah. When it, when it comes to the editions of D and D, the one that surprised me the most, though, from these results, was Fourth Edition. It seemed to have missed the mark for a lot of people. <sighs> I'm I'm not surprised. But I, again, I want to come back to that thing that I said earlier, is that I think that a lot of people recognize that 4th edition had a lot of really good innovations behind it, but that the sum total of 4th edition missed the mark. Yeah, I, I think that's important to note that like we're asking, what is your favorite edition? So people might not pick 4th as their favorite. They might just steal from 4th because mm -hmm. it had some good bits to it. In that same regard, though, I think 2nd edition, I'm going to call this the cult following D and D. Yeah, it's like it's like the underground. Hey, do you play second edition? It's like that. The same way that like Rocky Horror Picture Show is like. Have do do you watch that movie or do you not watch that? Yeah, because like... th this is the interesting thing. It's like you see a lot of conversations of people talking about like the good ideas that existed in fourth edition. Yeah, and then a lot of people then still. And I will will say that like a lot of people, despite the it, this is what's interesting too. I think that fifth edition and third edition despite both being the most, like, some of the most well-loved, also have a lot of criticism. Yeah. Like, and and for anybody that, like, having gone through several edition changes from the, the third to fourth and the fourth to fifth edition change, by the end of an edition, the criticisms of that edition are talked to death. Mm -hmm. Right? Everybody knows what the problems of it. And, and so, in particular, with, with both, with fourth edition was such a reaction to the problems of third edition and it and it and in a lot of ways i don't think you would be wrong to say that in many respects fourth edition overcorrected for some of the issues that people had with third edition because it perceived those things as fundamental flaws with third and so each time there there is as you said that baby in the bathwater problem of like there being certain elements of the game that we really really like and that we want to maintain but we don't want to get rid of and, and and I've seen that too when we've done videos where we've talked about things that we liked about 4th edition where people are like you seem to like a lot of things about 4E why don't you just play 4E but that doesn't acknowledge the fact that 4E had flaws big flaws as a final note from from these results the other thing that I really like is how many people are trying multiple TTRPGs uh I think again 5th edition D&D is my favorite place to be but when I talk about why you should be trying other RPGs is Sometimes you want to do a survival horror campaign in space. Sometimes you want to do a Mad Max campaign. And although there are a lot of ways to build this into 5th edition, and I also, I did see a post recently. It might have actually been from Ginny, um, but I'm not sure about that. But it basically said the reason why some people enjoy space fifth edition or these these people who make third party books that are like mad max fifth edition star wars fifth edition and it's like why does it always have to be fifth edition some people are very comfortable their groups very comfortable with fifth edition and branching out means learning an entirely new system that can be daunting but i agree with that but i also think there are a lot of systems out there that are are pretty fun to learn and once you've learned fifth edition mm -hmm. you look i'm at the point now where if i pick up a ttr RPG book. I flip through the first few pages and I'm like, ah, I get these mechanics because yeah. I've played enough fifth edition and now I've played a few other TTRPGs that basically TTRPGs are going to fall into one of like five categories with variations. It's, it's unreal because like it, these days, fifth edition lies at the higher end of complexity yeah. with modern TTRPGs. Right? Are there games that are more complicated than than fifth edition? Yes, but as, in, as far as games that are currently in print and currently being published, five E is one of the more complicated ones. Um, and so, if you learn five E, you're going to find learning a lot more easy, very easy. Alien RPG, I'd never played it before. We sat down at the table, and I grasped it in five minutes. Yeah. And and in a lot of cases, it is the the learning by doing really yeah. helps with this exp experience. And this is why I'll just say that, like, if you want to try new RPGs, one of the best ways to do it is to try them at conventions. When uh, you go to a convention, yeah. sign up for as many games because you're playing with a group of people. And honestly, they you're expected to not know everything. Yeah. So 
I sat down at so many tables being like, never played this before, what's up? And I got handed dice, was told when to roll them, and by five minutes in, I was yeah, like, okay, sure. cool, I got it. On my turn, I'm going to do this, this, and this. Awesome, great. Um, and it's a lot of fun. That's that. That's part of the fun of TTRPGs is there's a lot of options out there, and they're so much fun. And the different ways the mechanics can work at the table are really fun. Just because you could play a group of all rogues in D&D 5e and pull off a great heist doesn't mean you shouldn't think about trying blades in the dark yeah and and i think like it it is one of those things that i've i've seen this this comparison made many times that like in in many respects D D is like the skyrim of ttrpgs a lot of people love skyrim and they play a ton of skyrim and it's been modded it's been changed it's been hacked in all sorts of different ways but nobody can but people talk about themselves as video game players. Nobody tell says that they are a Skyrim player. Right. And and so whereas in the TTRPG world we we hear hear people say I'm a D&D player as opposed to a TTRPG player. And at least from the survey we can see that the vast majority of people are TTRPG players. They're playing more than one game. Is there one game that is their favorite? Yes, in the same way that that I've got a lot of hours on Skyrim, but I still enjoy a lot of other games. And some games are games that you aren't going to play as much as Skyrim, because that's just the nature of the beast, right? And in your D&D games, I'm hoping that Monty replaces all of the dragons with Thomas the Tank Engine. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a wrap for there. We're, if you're interested in looking a little, little bit more of this data, um, and maybe if you're someone that is really good at running numbers and wants to get on the data set, leave a comment in the in the comments below, and maybe we'll share some of the data that we collected uh, out with the the community and see if other people run the numbers and do some number crunching and find some interesting things with it within uh, the data that we collected. Or if you have ideas of other types of questions that we could ask and other things that you want to find out about the community, let us know in the comments below. I also have two specific questions that I want to hear from from everybody out there. What is your favorite edition of D anD D or your favorite other TTRPG. If if your favorite thing to play isn't an edition of D&D, I want to hear what your favorite TTRPG is, period. And so we know a lot of you out there love 5th edition, and if you want more content for 5e, check out our book, Monsters of Drakenheim. It's live on Kickstarter right now. The links are right down in the description below. And if you want to see us playing uh, some Drakenheim D&D and playtesting some of the new monsters, you can check out our actual play in the worlds of Track and I, which is Tuesday evenings on Twitch. You can find all of the episodes right up over here. And we've got plenty more TTRPG content that you can check out right up over here. Please subscribe to our channel, like this video, and ring that bell so that you never miss an episode. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time in, in the, the Dungeons. <laughs>